now uh, and and decision making through the movie. I've heard a lot of people go and tell me that if you're a fan of the comic books and you've read the comic books, then you'll enjoy this movie a lot more because there's a lot in there for the fans. Okay, and 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 I'll if that's the case, then okay, I'm really happy for the fans. But as a superhero movie fan and and a a non a really non comic book reader. You know, as a viewer watching this movie, well, okay, I didn't get any of those fan service points. I thought Wonder Woman was spectacular, especially when she shows up at the end during the final fight. Um, she makes the movie at the end. I can't wait to see to see her film. I thought the setup of the Justice League was good. I didn't have a problem with the way that they did that. I didn't really have a problem with the fact that they didn't really tell you who Wonder Woman was. You know, I'm I, I'm the kind of moviegoer that's willing to suspend my disbelief to enjoy a film. I really am. And there's a lot of having to do that in this particular movie. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't make up for the pacing. It doesn't make up for some of the editing. The editing is really choppy. You're kind of sitting back going, we're over here now. Okay, we're back here now. I didn't understand some of the dream sequences. If those are comic book things, and that's great for a comic book fan, but there's this long sequence when Bruce Wayne is down waiting for this um, this file to be decrypted, and then he ends up having this really cool dream sequence. But unfortunately, as a viewer, there's no em- emotional investment because you know it's a dream sequence. So you got this great scene with this sort of World War II esque Bruce Wayne and these flying monkey creature guys. And and Superman showing up and the Superman army, it's all great. But you're watching it going, I know it's a dream sequence and he's going to wake up. And so therefore, what's the, you know, what's the purpose here? I mean, if you're going to do a dream sequence, I guess shorten it up and make it quick. Because you are kind of as a director or as a movie asking me as a viewer, as a viewer to get emotionally attached to what's going on. And I can't do that because I know that it's a because I know that it's a dream. So some of the other issues I had too had to come down with the with the whole Batman versus Superman fight. I was actually reaching a point where I'm like, I know you guys are going to buddy up soon and battle what is more than likely going to be Doomsday created by Lex Luthor. Can we get to that, please? Because I know that one of you is not going to kill the other guy. And the other big issue I had with the whole Batman versus Superman aspect of it was I did not like the fact that Lex Luthor ends up essentially blackmailing Superman to go and fight Batman. There's no I, If you're going to have that battle, then there needs to be some type of anger and angst behind it. And you have the opportunity. You've got a dark knight that's really dark. He's branding people. He's burning the bat symbol into people. He's killing individuals. You have a darkness versus light. So you've already got all the reasons in the world for these two dudes to not get along and to fight each other and eventually come together, you know, as a team and then forming the Justice League. And instead, we get a moment where Lex Luthor kidnaps uh, Superman's mom and forces Superman to go fight Batman to save his mom. It's kind of you kind of go, well, Superman, why don't you just go tell Batman what's up? And why don't you two guys then go figure out how to rescue the mom because you're superheroes. I mean, they eventually do that, but first they have to go and fight. And I'm not emotionally invested in this fight because Superman isn't really emotionally invested in this fight. You don't really begin to believe ever that Superman is going to kill Batman because he's not that mad. I bought how they were able to level the playing field between Superman and Batman. I have no problem with that at all. I liked the way they did that with the shells filled with Krypton on gas, and that was fine. The battle in and of itself between the two of them was fine. I took a little bit of issue with the transition between Martha and Martha, Batman's um, mom and and Superman's mom, and that moment where Batman kind of turns. But, you know, I was willing to overlook that. I'm like, all right, I can, I can accept. I can accept that that's the thing that keeps Superman from killing Batman in – in that moment, I will say, in terms of continuity, there's a big. It, I had a big problem with the fact that <laughs> after Batman fights Superman and the mechanical bat suit is all jacked up, uh, the face is all cracked, right? And he's all been beat to a pulp, and all that was cool, by the way. I really did. 
I really did, again, the fight in and of itself was good. I felt as if Batman was getting beat and was really feeling the force of being thrown through walls by Superman. But he fit. He, he decides he's not going to kill Superman. Lois Lane shows up. They decide they're going to go and rescue Superman's mom. And then the next time you see Superman, he's back in his regular bat suit. Was he wearing the bat suit underneath the mechanical Batman suit? Did he have a change of clothes inside the bat plane? Because you see Superman in the bat plane and he's got the regular cowl on and he's back in his regular clothes. I mean, that's almost something for, like, the Lego Batman movie, right? You know, he has to go and change, and then he goes and he switches out the parts. I, that I could see, but it's, I kind of was like, whoa, hold on a second. That seems to be a bit of a jump. The end battle I thought was great. I didn't particularly like the Lex Luthor doomsday, but that's also very comic booky. If you're reading a comic book and the way the storylines play out, then you're going to have the mad, you know, villain guy, Lex Luthor, build and create the big baddie in Doomsday. So I'm going, oh, okay, that's a very comic booky thing to do, and I can understand how that would take place. I did have an issue when, when Lex Luthor was telling Superman that he had to go battle Batman in this epic smackdown because apparently Lex Luthor is a, you know, just wanted to see those two guys fight. Um, you're kind of standing there going, you're Superman. You couldn't threaten him with laser eyes or, you know, carry him up into the stratosphere and threaten to drop him if he doesn't go help his mom. I mean, Lex Luthor is kind of a weaselly guy. I'm going to venture a guess that if you threaten to kill him, he probably would go and save your mom. I'm just, when they're standing there on the platform, I'm going, this whole thing seems unbalanced. With Lex Luthor standing there threatening Batman, I mean, threatening Superman, and he's Superman. Okay, so anyways, apart from that, the end battle was great. I really enjoyed the the uh, the the battle with the three of them Wonder Woman Batman and Superman versus Doomsday that was fantastic and the moment Wonder Woman arrives on scene i forgot all about Superman and Batman because Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman was just absolutely fantastic i would, i mean i can't wait to see the Wonder Woman movie and it was one of those moments where i'm watching the film and i think about not that i want to get political but i think about when they talk, when you hear discussions about political correctness in movies and strong female characters, and there's not enough of them in Hollywood, I'm not arguing there is or there isn't, but I am going to argue Hollywood should do more, man. We as dudes, let's be honest, we as dudes like to watch women kicking butt. That is really, really cool. I think it's a big reason why The Force Awakens was so popular. Ray was a really likable character, and having that female protagonist is really cool to watch, regardless of, of whether or not you're a, you're a man or a woman. And seeing that strong female character is something different and unique. And seeing Wonder Woman out there with her lasso of truth and her, you know, powerful armbands and all that, that was, that was really, really cool. I didn't have a problem with the fact that they killed off Superman. I think everybody knows Superman is coming back. Uh, I thought the end was a little bit on the long side. I thought that after, you know, after the battle and Superman was dead, that it took a long time before we got to that final shot of the dirt lifting off of the um, coffin to signify that Superman was coming back because you knew you were going to go and you knew you were going to get that. Um, you know, it was it kind of felt a little bit <laughs> like the end of Lord of the Rings, where it's like, all right, you know, let's end this already. We're already two and a half hours in. We can, you know, go ahead and wrap it up now. I did like the introduction the way they did, again, of um, Aquaman, uh, Cyborg, and Flash. Uh, there were moments during that end battle where you see the three of them. And those are establishing shots where you see Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. And you begin to sort of imagine filling in the other superheroes in much like an Avengers kind of way. And I go, oh, all right. If this movie is serving as, which it did, a setup for the Justice League, and we had to get past all of this, then it served its purpose. I mean, it two and a half, took two and a half hours to serve its purpose, but it does have me excited, more excited for a Justice League movie, not less excited, even though I thought the movie was really, really flawed. So I suppose if you're DC, that's success, right? 
Batman vs. Superman is going to make a ton of money. I don't think it's going to break any major records, but it's going to make a ton of money. Uh, it's going to be divisive, but I think you're still going to end up getting more people out into the theater to see the Wonder Woman mo- movie or the uh, Justice League movie, um, even though Batman vs. Superman wasn't as good as it could have been. So, you know, I give it a, I give it a 6, 6.5, I guess. You know, whereas I'd give Man of Steel an eight and a half or a nine. You know, I, I, I know I don't want to rush out to see it. I do want to see it again because I'm wondering if upon a second viewing, um, I will enjoy it more. And that'll, you know, uh, that I'll have to wait to see. I'm going to venture, I guess, that more than likely I will on a second viewing just because I've had a chance to sort of digest it. And now I know what to expect. Maybe I'll appreciate it uh, more. But I did walk out of the theater going, meh, I don't really want to run back out and see that. And I'll wait until it comes out on, you know, Blu-ray probably before I watch it again. There's going to be an R-rated extended cut, so I'll probably end up getting that because I'm a big fan of uh, director's cuts. So so there you go. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the movie. You know, I mean, I enjoyed watching it. I was entertained. Just wished it was better. Uh, the Star Wars podcast is, of course, on my Nerd World's network on the John Justice Show on iTunes. So if uh, you like what you hear and this is the first time you're checking it out, I would encourage you to please go and subscribe to uh, my podcast on iTunes. And again, you can find that uh, the John Justice Show in my Nerd World. You want to drop me an email? Talkshownerd at gmail.com. Talkshownerd at gmail.com if you want to email me. And uh, thanks for checking out the uh, podcast. I appreciate it. Bye. My Nerd World.